Hello there and welcome to my channel Novice Modelling and the Midlife Crisis. My name is Andy and today we're going to be doing a what's in the box kit review on my ICM kit number 72072 Polycarpov I-16 Type 18 World War II Soviet fighter and we're doing this in conjunction with our current little theme which is the Finnish Air Force because the Finns generally just used any captured aircraft they could get their hands on. So many of these fell into the hands of the Finns during the um, Winter War and the Continuation War, and they just pressed them into service against their former owners. Now, we're going to do basically what we normally do. We're going to have a look at the instructions. We're going to have a look at Wikipedia, because ICM don't really provide any information about the aircraft on their instruction sheet. And we're going to have a look at the parts, decals, and then we'll talk about what the whole thing of me letting you choose, me putting lots of kits out is all about. So this is just from Wikipedia. The Polikarpov I-16 is a Soviet single-engine single-seat fighter aircraft of a revolutionary design. It was the world's first low-wing cantilever monoplane fighter with retractable landing gear to attain operational status and as such introduced a new vogue in fighter design. The I-16 was introduced in the mid-1930s and formed the backbone of the Soviet Air Force at the beginning of World War II. The diminutive fighter, nicknamed Ishak or Ishakok, Donkey or Burrow by uh, Soviet pilots, figured prominently in the Second Sino-Japanese War, the Battle of Kalkin, Winter War and the Spanish Civil War, where it was called Rata, Rat by the Nationalists, or Mosca by the Republicans, which meant fly, and the Finns called the aircraft Sipiorava, Flying Squirrel. Kind of looks a bit like a squirrel. Hmm, okay. So, design and development. While working on the Polycarpov I-15 biplane, Nikolai Polycarpov began designing an advanced monoplane fighter. It featured cutting-edge innovations such as retractable landing gear and a fully enclosed cockpit, and was optimised for speed with a short, stubby fuselage and a right R1820 radio engine in a NACA cowling. The aircraft is small, light and simple to build. I'm just going to leave it there, and if you want to read anything more about it, you can just nip onto Wikipedia or any other reliable or semi-reliable source that you can find. So, we'll have a look at the instructions. I will confirm I have actually built an ICM kit before, and it was a smaller aircraft, a Japanese one. I think it was this one here, but I forget the actual uh, name of it. And it had a rather complicated engine, which I made a bit of a, bit of a mess of. So I'm going to be very careful when putting this engine together. That's a lesson learned. So looking at the instructions, we have a standard sort of sprue diagram. There is only one basic sprue with this kit. It's nice and little. And then we have this rather complicated engine setup, which I know people like to, you know, do these things really proper, but I'm never going to see the engine. And well, I certainly am not going to bother painting it, apart from the obvious parts of the front. That's just the way I do things. Um, number two, we're going to put the two short stubby sections of the fuselage together. We're going to put our uh, tail wheel in. We're going to put this um, seat in. We've got a little sort of um, joystick control here with a um, some sort of lever. And we're going to put that onto this base part, which is the floor of the fuselage. Then in section three, oof, there's a lot going on here. We're going to put our engine into the um, fuselage. We're going to put the engine housing on the front. We're going to attach some sections of exterior engine housing to this part here. These come in four sections, so that looks a little bit nasty, I've got to admit. So we're going to have to be... It's small, there's not many parts, but it's kind of looking a bit complex. Why those two parts couldn't be provided as one piece, I'm not exactly certain, but I'm sure the guys at ICM knew what they were doing. Section four. So we've got our fuselage all put together. We're then we're going to put our wings on. Our wings are basically just one piece. There's no gluing two sections together. And we're then going to put a two-bladed propeller on. Our spinner. We've got a couple of guns to go on it. And then we're going to put our landing gear on as well. This particular aircraft comes with a open cockpit, as you can see. And we have to assemble our tail and rudder system together with a small part to cap it all off. It's exactly the same way that the Japanese one was built, I seem to recall. Yeah, okay. So, the engine part aside, 
and maybe this bit of the cowling here. Yeah, I think this is going to be okay because I know this is complicated. So let's have a look at the sprue we've been waiting for. Uh, like I said, one sprue, fuselage, it's very small. That's my finger. There is obviously some extra parts to go on the front here, but it's very tiny, isn't it? Hmm. So we've got the seat. Here we have the sort of engine cowlings here. Um, as, oh, that's got some detail. Huh? We've got an instrument panel. Uh, I'm not too sure what these parts are. It's like some sort of um, exhaust system parts, maybe. Got a couple of wheels, a little bit of flash that needs to come off. This is going to be a piece behind the uh, bulkhead sort of thing, behind the pilot, I should think. Got a spinner. Seem to have two options on the spinner. Didn't notice that in the instructions, but okay. Um, we've got a selection of smaller parts, which are going to be unidentified. We have our twin bladed propeller. These are going to be part of the tail assembly. There is some flash on this, very fine. Shouldn't be too much of a problem to get that off. Detail on the wing surfaces is fine. I mean, it's a small aircraft, so it's not going to be too chunky. You can see fine looking um, rivets on the wing panels. So that's kind of nice. You can see them here as well, just about. Can you see that in the camera? Yeah, it's got them there anyway. I can see them. Um, these parts here look like they're going to be parts of the undercarriage. And the wheel covers, there's the floor of the cockpit looking down. And there's it looking up. And again, we've got some, we've got some minor detail on here. Again, because it's such a small aircraft, they're using pretty small rivets, I guess. Uh, these are the sections of the engine. Again, detail on here. There is some. Kind of complicated. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Now, this comes with a set of Russian decals. I couldn't actually find anyone currently making this with Finnish decals um, in 172. So I'm just going to kind of wing it if this is the one that's selected and i'll just find some some air decals of my own i mean it's probably only going to be a number like this one and we'll see we'll, see, we'll, we'll find some some uh, sort of internet reference to try and base it on but it's not going to be exact but it's going to be a little bit hit and miss but there we go and uh, we've got the very small open cockpit section you'll forgive me it's loose and i'm not going to take this out of the baggie for you to look at because i don't want to lose it and that's basically all we've got to look at. Now, I've actually got this um, book for Finnish Aces of World War II by Osprey. And the general idea of doing this is going to be to try and figure out, you know, see if we can't actually build a plane that was um, flown by one of the Finnish Aces in World War II. And we've also got these books for a few other nations, like the Romanians and Slovakians and a few others as well. And this particular aircraft, it was just, you know, the, the Finns basically captured them and used them as and when they could there's no actual um documents of one of these aircraft in this book that i have seen as yet there's certainly no pictures but there is a polycarpov i-15-3 and this one was flown by lieutenant avali pura i do actually have one of these as well but i'm saving this to do finish um biplanes at some point and I'm kind of guessing that this is pretty much how it's going to be set up. So yellow cowling, uh, yellow wingtips, yellow band here, which seems to be pretty standard uh, through the fins throughout. A three-colour um, camouflage pattern with grey undersurfaces, a serial number here, and a large number on the back. So I'm kind of hoping I can get somewhere close with that if we decide to build this one. And what the hell is going on? So um, basically, if you haven't seen any of the other videos, we're doing seven What's in the Box reviews this week, um, released every six hours. Um, all the aircraft are finished. I have a very large collection of around about 300 172 aircraft, which I've been building over the past six months, um, basically waiting for this day so I can unleash it on, on unsuspect, unsuspecting YouTube. Uh, the general idea is I'm going to put six kits normally on the table, sometimes four, sometimes five, depending on what I've got. And I'm going to open the floor to you guys and let you pick which one is built. So like I've said previously in all the other videos, I'm sure you're getting bored of hearing this. All you need to do is go to the comments and put BF109G6, Hurricane Mark 1, 
a16 or whichever one you want to see me build now depending on which one and how complicated i feel it is i am just a novice at the end of the day and how complex the painting scheme is um i may decide to build the number two on the list uh or i may just decide to build another one anyway and we'll, basically the aim is to get one finished within a eight did eight day cycle and then we'll just move on to a, another set of aircraft and i think next week is going to be either the finns or the romanians so interesting planes for you to look at currently just in case you're interested the um scores are the fiat g50 is in the lead with one two three four five six seven eight nine votes so that's that one and the curtis hawk is currently second with seven the i16 currently only has two votes the morco moran has two the Fokker 21 has five, the Hurricane has four, and the BF 109 has only got one. There's not a bit of nobody who loves the BF 109. I do, I've got about 30 of the damn things. Oh well, never mind. So please do uh, have a look at some of the other videos we've got. Um, there's plenty going to be going on on the channel in the next few weeks, including more videos from Mikey's Model Barn, which I haven't, you haven't looked at the first two of those. That's pretty cool. He's got a collection of about 5,000 kits. So basically it's me going into what used to be the piggery at his place and basically acting like a pig in the preferable uh, scheisse, as the Germans would say. Um, rummaging through 5,000 kits and throwing loads of them in front of the um, camera going, hey, look at this here, look what I found, isn't it great? Yep, it certainly was. So, hi Mikey, hi Catherine and hi Anthony. Um, so yeah, please do like and subscribe. Please do um, check out our other What's in the Box videos, which we've got about 150 of. And for those that are um, shaking your head at my uh, haul videos, there's another couple of those to come, unfortunately. Um, and then we're pretty much going to shut that down because we've spent way, way too much money. Yeah, bit of a problem. So anyway, be seeing you.